no. Like, dude, come on, the guy's incredible. But he's right. You're professionals. You're expected to do it even better every time. I think that that's one of the tough things about being a coach sometimes is you're like, man, Janelle, you're absolutely destroying this entire team. But listen, we could do a couple things better. Like, people look at you like, what? What the <laughs> hell's wrong with that guy? You're like, well, he's a pro. We have to keep pushing the pros to be even better because they can, in their wildest dreams, all of a sudden they become that person. So I, I like him. I'm more on the Eric Kendricks train. I'm sorry. There is something about this kid's life force on this defense that is so awesome. And the fact that he can cover and hit people and chase you down and do everything, bat it away on fourth and five when it's Ezekiel Elliott and it's just the whole game. And to me, I think he makes a better case for it, in my opinion. I'm sorry. I'm with you on that, Alex, because I wrote something on this for tomorrow, assuming that he doesn't get the worst snub of recent memory and not get named to the Pro Bowl tonight. It would be when some terrible happens. snubbery. That would be, be a huge snub. That would be the so snubbericious. The biggest. The biggest. Um, snub posturous. So, snub posturous. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a guy who's been overlooked oh, yeah. among a team of defensive stars for his entire time he's been here. He's you know, and it goes back to to high school where he was an overlooked recruit. Um, and then he goes to UCLA as a three-star prospect. He ends up winning the Butkus Award, which is the best linebacker in college football in 2014. Then he's told, hey, you're six foot, three, 230 pounds. You're too small to play in the NFL to be a first-round pick. And then he's a five-year starter in Minnesota. So I look back at the numbers, and obviously the thing that everybody's talking about now, coming off of the performance in Week 15, he's number one ranked linebacker by pro football focus. He was juggling between that for a while. He was number two most of the season. 12 pass breakups is a new pro football focus record for linebackers this year alone. So he's been incredible in coverage and all they're having him do lowest percentage of targets caught into his coverage, which is also absurd. Fifth most run stops by any player ranked third in pass rush productivity among all linebackers. I think he makes a quiet case and almost even a better case than uh, Daniil Hunter, and and that's not to discredit anything Daniil's done, 50 sacks by the age of 25. So you want Daniil traded? Yes, exactly. (laughs) Get him out here. Get him out tomorrow. (laughs) Sure. I think think you're right, though. And and here's my question is when you're looking at, like when we were talking earlier today about the defensive player of the year, there's like five names that hit my head right away. And you're like, well, what is everybody looking for? Mm -hmm. Right? Because there's so many different criteria to make it. Like the first two were Minka Fitzpatrick and Stefan Gilmore. And you're like, well, those two, because – they're interceptions there and they always have a nose for the ball and they know what they're doing. And, and then you think back and you're like, well, well if it's tackles, then it's going to be somebody like a Luke Keekley or a, you know, a Kendricks or somebody like that. But what if it's about sacks? Like there's so many things now that guys have really separated themselves for that. You're like, well, what is everyone really looking at? Like what makes you a defensive player of the year? Yeah. For yeah. me, it's entirely about how much value you have brought to your defense and, and what the different things that you do uh, like how they impact the other team. Now, Stefan Gilmore, in my mind, probably is number one because quarterbacks throwing at him have a 32 quarterback rating, which you actually it's would have terrible, a, right? you would have a higher quarterback rating if you spike the ball into the ground every time. <laughs> but since he keeps intercepting passes and running the back for touchdowns, they have a lower quarterback rating than if you just incompleted that particular pass. That is a massive impact on trying to pass the ball against the New England Patriots because you literally cannot throw to whatever side of the field he's on because he'll probably intercept it for a touchdown. That's a big problem for you. Uh, With Daniil Hunter, he leads the NFL in quarterback pressures. And if you look at how much quarterback rating goes down when guys are pressured, even the best go from 115 quarterback rating to 80 something. You go from being a superstar to a backup, essentially, when you get pressure, even when you're one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And if you're not, then you become a guy who would be playing in the XFL, essentially, when you get pressure. That's a massive impact from someone like Daniel Hunter. Kendrick's though, I think is a little harder to pin down exactly. In the NFL today, we have so many teams that throw to tight ends, so many teams that do check downs and stuff to running backs and rely on those to get big yards. So to have somebody who is always uh, getting into his gap and making plays on, on the run and, and keeping you behind the sticks and not allowing you to just throw these little swing passes out to the flat I think also brings a massive value that's a little harder to, uh, I guess, define than a defensive end or a cornerback. I mean, this to me is probably one of the more wide open defensive player of the year candidacies, I guess, races that we've seen in a while, because it's not Aaron Donald dominating everybody else. It's not Von Miller at the head of the list. Um, It's not J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt. Yeah, you've gotten, there's no clear cut 
and I'm writing about this for Monday because it plays into it. There's no clear cut superstar pass rusher dominating everybody else. Daniil Hunter technically is that, but the persona I think nationally is kind of what keeps him out of the spotlight of being this household name. Um, he's just not that guy. He's kind of this like quiet superstar who has aggressively gone through this season to where he should be a lock for the Pro Bowl tonight. Uh, but in terms of an all pro career, an all pro 2019 and, and a defensive player of the year 2019, he's still just like not on the tip of your tongue. I think if you're not a Vikings fan or if you're facing him every single season in the NFC North, I mean, that's why to me, like there's still levels of his game, like what Zim was saying at the top of the at the top of the hour, that you know as a run stopper he's gotten better. That's been a part of his game that I think he's really focused on. That is completely underappreciated. Everybody thinks of him as the dominant guy off the edge. He's pretty darn good against the run too. Right, and I, and that was my whole point was there's no specific one person that rolls off your tongue like everybody's like last year everybody would have told you it was Aaron Donald like because there's just the way he went through offensive lines like he was a wrecking ball and then the year that Khalil, Khalil Mack, Mack yeah right I mean they you just saw they were so dominant you're like there's no way that guy can't win this year if it's gonna be like a big hey what are we gonna look for I would say give it to a guy like Eric Kendricks you look for a guy that's like hey who inspires the guy or guys around him that's a Kendricks to me you know, you talk about a guy like a Sean Lee down in Dallas, guys like that that inspire people around them. If there's no one clear cut guy, because listen, you could do it off sacks, there's like three guys. You could do it off interceptions, there's three guys. Or you could do it off one guy that you're like, man, wh- who's the one guy that's been out there that has just been wreaking havoc all year? You know, and before that, there could have been a good case for Quan Alexander early in the year. You know, like guys like that that were just had a nose for the ball, could cover well, and just led their defenses and did a great job. That, to me, was like, man, that's a defensive player of the year. Well, give me your perspective on this from being on the field, Alex, of which is scarier for an offense when the opposing team has a top-five pass rusher, a top-five linebacker, or a top-five corner. Which one do you go into a game going, we're in more trouble because they got that guy which position do you feel like is tougher to manage when the other team has an elite player I really do feel like it's a linebacker and I say that to say this if you have one pass rusher that's easy to stop like dude we're just gonna chip you and throw the running back at you all day we're gonna have the guard coming out to you you know there's ways to defuse that same thing with the cornerback listen if you have one great cornerback that's great you took away one side of the field we'll just use the other side of the field like we can run decoys too we don't care when you have a middle linebacker that can run sideline to sideline, is tough to block, doesn't care about sticking his head in through the A-gap at full force, can rush the passer, cover your tight ends and your elite backs. Like That's your guy that you're like, how are we going to stop him? I remember times when, before Kendricks was really Kendricks, it was Luke Keekley to us. And it was always yep. like, how are we going to get him stopped? Well, we're going to whack him. We're going to crack him. We're going to wham him. We're going to send the guards at him. <laughs> we used to change our entire offensive scheme for him because – we didn't want him to get going. So we would, instead of like sending the guard through the three technique to Luke, it would be an automatic Raider call. And you were just gone. Hey, dude, you're on your own. I'm going to go get Luke Keekley however I have to get him. If you have to cut him, get him down. If you have to hold him, you got to grab him. He was so slippery. Now, people have kind of caught on to him. And, and as you know, age will have its effects. So now Kendricks is the next guy coming in line. And people are like, dude, how do we stop this guy? We can't block him. He's covering our backs when we don't want him to. Like, he's showing up on the field in the most crucial times in the most positive way. I pulled up a stat earlier um, just thinking about running. They've Remember how good they were three years ago, the year before he got his contract and stopping running backs from catching passes? Yes. Yep. So. Yes. I looked at kind of the progression for that uh, from 2017 to 18, and, and it, re- it sparked my interest in that because of what Zim said yesterday, that they ran the exact same play at Kendricks that I believe it was Todd Gurley on Anthony Barr in uh, the Rams game a year yes. ago, and it's clearly a very different result this time around. Um, so in 2017, there's six in receptions, third in QBR, first in yards per reception, 6.5. 2018, 14th fewest receptions, 22nd in QBR, 24th in yards per reception. This year, 8th fewest receptions, 10th lowest total QBR, and 19th in yards per reception. I was honestly kind of surprised about that last figure. I mean, the discrepancy between 7.9, where they are this year, and 6.5 yards per reception is, I mean, that's, that's over the course of time, that's a big number, but it's really not that far off when you're looking at it like a small sample size in a vacuum. And he's a huge part of that. Like going, going back and watching um, 
Matt and I were talking about this this morning, kind of like what what's the best play you can remember from Eric, from Eric Kendricks this season that was not from the Chargers game or not the fourth and five pass breakup when they're throwing a Zeke Elliott and, and trying to mount a comeback. And I mean, this guy is all over the place. Right. Like yeah, the, the way that he reads plays and, from every game. It yeah. Like. The way he reads and reacts. I mean, he went back and thought about that Detroit game when the Vikings are only up by four. It's the fourth quarter. Um, it's fourth and two. And just the way that he reacts to seeing the running back motion out into the flat and then seeing that it's not going to be what he initially thought it was and, and, and gets the stop right there on fourth and two. I mean, he, that changes potentially the course of the game. Like this is, you know, for all that he's being asked to do for all we're seeing with the evolution of the linebacker. And I mean, he is the evolution of the linebacker. Yeah, it's not Anthony Barr anymore. I mean, right. it's, um, it's the Eric Kendricks types. I mean, I think that that, puts him immediately in the conversation somebody who deserves that award because as cliche as it is all the stuff that he does that quote unquote doesn't show up on the stat sheet it's very true think right. about the Odenabo play from Sunday he he doesn't hold Austin Eckler down and pin him down there by the sideline does does Afadi have time to to stop and pick up the ball and run with it right well I you know what I think is interesting about Kendricks uh is that the value of the linebacker position has gone down in a lot of teams' minds. Like, they don't want to pay for it as much as they used to. And that kind of includes Kendricks, who got a very reasonable contract uh, when he signed his deal, even though he had performed extremely well over the first four years. And so if you have one of those guys that can do stuff that everybody else can't do, I think your value is elevated, that there are a lot of players, and this is not to take away from Daniil Hunter, I made the case for him for defensive MVP, but there are a lot of guys putting pressure on quarterbacks off the edge. Like that happens all the time in the NFL. Each week you're facing a guy who's really great at it, more likely than not, or you're probably playing a bad team. Uh, but every team has one of those. Not every team has a game-wrecking linebacker who can do absolutely everything. And to me, that pushes up 